How do you get avid gun owners and people that support the Second Amendment to give up their guns and go along with anti-gun legislation? How do you do that? Maybe you accomplish that by performing a mass shooting into a crowd that is very likely to be conservative, very likely to vote Republican, very likely to be Trump supporters, very likely to be pro-Second Amendment, and very likely to own guns. Georgia Representative Marjorie Taylor Greene is used to being wrong. This goes back to what I said before about guns in America. I think it's such a longer conversation, but it's, it's, we're the only ones who keep dealing with the same story, the same conversation every single time it happens, and, and it just continues to happen. NBA superstar LeBron James, like many in the United States, is simply tired of our new normal. You make them scared, you make them victims, and you change their mindset, and then possibly you can pass anti-gun legislation. Is that what happened in Las Vegas? Is that why um, the country music festival was targeted? Because those would be the people, would be the ones that we would relate to? Are they trying to terrorize our mindset and change our minds on the Second Amendment? Is that what's going on here? It is purely conspiratorial, which makes sense on why she made the comments she did about September 11th. The ability to get a gun, the ability to, <clears throat> you know, to do these things over and over and over, and there's been no change is very ridiculous. It really is this simple, but folks like Green view basic reforms as an infringement. It's preposterous posturing, which has resulted in her making millions off the gun lobby. I have a lot of questions about that. I don't believe Stephen Paddock was a lone wolf. I don't believe that he pulled this off all by himself, and I know most of you don't either. So I am really wondering if there is a, there's a bigger motive there, and does it have to do with the Second Amendment? Because what's the best way to control the people? You have to take away their guns. This is the epitome of the American school system lacking in fundamental skills to teach the greens of the world common sense. It makes no sense that we continue to lose innocent lives and, <clears throat> you know, on campuses, on schools, at shopping markets, and, you know, movie theaters and all type of stuff. It's just it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. And the fact that we haven't changed anything it's actually been a lot easier to actually be able to, to own a firearm. Um, it's, it's, it's stupid. Amen to that, King, but it wouldn't stop there. If there had been, if Scott Peterson, the resource officer at Parkland, had done his job, then Nicholas Cruz wouldn't have killed anybody in your high school, or at least protected them. Why are you supporting red flag gun laws that attack our Second Amendment rights? And why are you using kids to get to, as a barrier? Do you not know how to defend your stance? Look, I'm an American citizen. I'm a gun owner. I have a concealed carry permit. I carry a gun with, for protection for myself. And you are using your lobby and the money behind it and the kids to try to take away my Second Amendment rights. You don't have anything to say for yourself? You can't defend your stance? How did you get over 30 appointments with senators? How'd you do that? How did you get major press coverage on this issue? And how did you get kids? Why do you use kids? Why kids? You know, if school if school zones were protected by with security guards with guns, there would be no mass shootings at schools. Instead of showing how pro-life she is by protecting it from school shootings, she goes out of her way to heckle a survivor. They're gonna cloak all this stuff, you know, the second the myth of the Second Amendment, the freedom. You know, it's just it's a myth, it's a joke. It's, it's just a game they play. I mean, that's freedom. Is it freedom for kids to go to school and try to socialize and try to learn and be scared to death that they might die that day? I mean, is that freedom? Or is it freedom to have a congressman who can make a postcard with all his family holding rifles, including an AR-15 or whatever? Is that cool? A good question by San Antonio Spurs head coach, Greg Popovich. The best way to stop a bad guy with a gun is with a good guy with a gun. But yet you're attacking our Second Amendment. And you have nothing to say. No words. Tell him walking. He's got nothing to say. Sad. He has nothing to say because there really isn't anything to say, you guys. He has nothing to say because he's paid to do this. He has the walkaway march. He's mm -hmm. got the 
Um, he's got the Women's March, and they're funding all of this. Every Town Gun USA, they're funding all this stuff, okay? That was David Hogue right there. David, we saw him inside the Senate building. He had 30, 30 um, appointments where he ran around and got to talk to senators. I got to talk to none, none. He had media coverage all over the place. I had zero. Guess what? I'm a gun owner. I'm an American citizen, and I have nothing but this guy with his George Soros funding and his major liberal funding has got everything. I want you to think about that. That's where we are. And he's a coward. He can't say one word because he can't defend his stance because there is no defense for taking away guns. There is no defense for gun confiscation. Zero. And so there he goes. He just keeps walking with his, with his two ladies that probably work with him. Maybe his handlers? Maybe his handlers, absolutely. They're telling him, don't say anything. Mm -hmm. So that's the problem. They have handlers and they have no argument back. None. That's it. I'm done. She is an absolute lunatic. Her comment after, was, after the massacre, my office is in contact with federal, state, and local officials, and we stand ready to assist. In what? They're dead. What are you going to assist with? Cleaning up their brains off the wall, wiping the blood off the schoolroom floor. What are you going to assist with? Bill Lee, I'm closely monitoring the tragic situation. Please join us in prayer. What are you monitoring? They're dead. Children, they're dead. When I pick up my six and 11 year old grandkids at school, when I'm here at home. On the way, it goes through my mind that I hope they're gonna be okay. As always, Coach Pop puts them in their place. You talk about the, the uh, women's rights. Okay, you're blaming this all on the women. My body is my body, and I, want, I don't want the government telling me what I can do with my body. Ma'am, are you having children anytime soon? I'm, um, that's my question. I'm asking a legitimate question. And you're right, it's your body, but a baby inside a woman's womb is another person's body. Not your body and not my body. And that uh, abortion is murder of another human being, whether that body is inside your uterus or, or not. But that is murder. Ah, uh, yes, the handmaid has thoughts on women. Women's rights. And I'm obviously disappointed about the decision made. Um, and, you know, I just really, for me, I mean, obviously I feel bad for future um, women and, and women now, but I also feel bad for those who protested for this. Um, I don't even know how many years ago, but protested for this and, you know, are alive to see that be that decision to be reversed. And I just, you know, I just think that history repeating itself. I just feel like um, just having this decision reverse I feels like feel like we're almost going backwards um, and you know not only did this decision kind of mark um, you know regarding reproductive rights um, I feel like it also kind of puts a lead way and maybe to reverse other things but I still want to encourage people to use their voice and not feel too discouraged about um, this because we can definitely make a change and, and hopefully um, change will happen. Leave it up to US Open champ Coco Goff to do and say more than Green ever would for women. I, I do not support the murder of another human being. I support life and I will always stand up to fight for the lives of the unborn and, and life overall. Um, okay. But I don't, I don't think you're having children anytime soon. So I appreciate your interest in women's rights, but killing an unborn baby is not a woman's right and that's not health care. Okay, if a child, if a, a, the 10 year old child that was, that was the rape, what about then I think we should put the rapist, the a child the abuser. Be punished. The child can't have anything done to her without uh, the government going after them, fining them and all that stuff. That's not right. A child abuser and a rapist should be put to death if they are doing that to a 10-year-old child. How very pro-life of Ms. Green. Title IX, we must respect it and protect it. I feel real fortunate that I'm a Title IX baby without it you wouldn't know me i feel like now more than ever female athletes are fighting that fight to be heard some things that are systematic are not going to get changed overnight investing in women sports is positive for a lot of different reasons on and off the field so it's like what's the next step 
I don't know, because every time I think the world is going a certain direction, the ground gets shaken right beneath me and we go right back. Sport can be a life-changing opportunity, and it is for many people. It's, it allows them to jump into a different socioeconomic status if we're cutting people off at the knees and not allowing them to pursue those opportunities. You know, it'll change the entire, not only their lives, but it'll change the economy. Meanwhile, athletes across the industry of sports speak truth to power and fact check the likes of the Georgia Congresswoman. For many things to take in when we watch Georgia Congresswoman Marjorie Taylor Greene. I think some of the worst is how self-hating she is, how she does not stand for the American people, how she does not stand for women, and how she wants to be in the good graces of fascism. She does not care, even being so pro-life, how many school children are gunned down. She does not care how her laws hurt the very people that she is supposed to serve. She is there for one reason and one reason only power and to wave it like a magic wand amongst those in her constituency and also those who oppose her. The lack of self-awareness to record oneself harassing a survivor of a mass shooting. The lack of awareness to say that you are pro-life and then call for someone to be killed. It's really telling. If there are any stories we missed, if there are any that you would like to submit, get at me on Twitter, on Instagram, on TikTok. DMs are open.